They're not joking about when you buy a new house, just expect everything to go wrong and then you have to fix it because it's about 95 degrees out and our air conditioner went. And the repairmen, of course, they're super busy, not knocking them, but um, looks like we're fixing some things on our own. So um, join me. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications and give this video a thumbs up. Let's get started. So this actually started happening prior to this event house wasn't getting cool i mean the vents weren't blowing whatsoever and you probably have the same problem which is why you're watching this video and my unit is not that old it's in 2018 but we were told when we bought the house that you know look, we can't inspect this it's winter time we could turn it on but obviously there's no way of actually knowing if it needs freon or anything and that this unit it's freon it's very expensive and so of course now that it's summer it's not blowing it's really hot in my house it's currently 84 it's up to be almost 85 a little bit later and so um, we went outside and saw that our unit was completely frozen. By unit, I'm talking about this bad boy right here. It's not frozen right now, but essentially that pipe coming in was all ice. And then everything inside here, it's hard to see at this very second, was also all ice. So immediately, just so you know, the second you see that, you got to turn your system off. The way that an air conditioner works is, is that the free on everything, essentially this is kind of has a fan outside and essentially it cools a coil and that coil could get to a certain temperature where so much ice freezes up that inside the other part of the unit becomes a block of ice and so air is trying to get through that ice but it cannot because the coils are completely frozen literally with water on them from condensation and so then you're not getting any airflow so the first thing is to turn it off and let it sit it could be one two three eight twelve hours to get that block of ice to completely thaw. And yes, that means you're gonna have water in your basement or near your unit inside, but you need to thaw inside and outside. Now it rained over here yesterday, so this thawed out here pretty quickly, but inside we've gotten roughly about five gallons of water, which by my calculation should be enough of water out, which means the ice is completely thawed. Let me go inside and show you what that looks like because you may not realize that this is actually a two piece unit. We are in my basement now and uh, obviously you can see things are apart, but essentially that unit outside, for those of you who don't know, connects here. You can see the coil coming in and going back out and runs down this way. Yesterday, this was a block of ice in here. And so what I have to do is shut this off, leave the fan on, let it spin for a while. But as it's defrosting, the water was going everywhere. I mean, it was a flood down here. A little bit of water left, not too much. Um, but this whole bucket was filled to about here earlier. And then this is the leftover after being shut off for a few more hours. So a couple of gallons of water. And um, I just have this down here because there's still a little bit coming out. And you can actually, this one's not as drenched as it was before. See, actually nothing's coming out of here really. Which tells me that this is completely completely out of ice. When you touch it, it's really not that cold. The, the temperature down here, it's the same temperature as this one here, which tells me once again, this is probably defrosted enough. The main goal at this time is not to get 100% fixed because we don't have the Freon. It's just to defrost this enough so that I can kick it back on, let it run for a little bit while it's still 90 something degrees out. Look at the condensation here. It's still very cold inside, but luckily there is no water coming out here. Probably something I should have said at the beginning of the video. Don't ever do anything to your unit until you disconnect the power. We have a switch on the side, so I have it off here and I have it off at the breaker. Anyway, let's go outside and spray down the unit. So while that is thawing, I let this sit for overnight and now I need to clean it out. It is filled with disgusting stuff. Well, it was, I just cleaned it out right now. So here's some photos of what it used to look like. Then after I kind of scraped it out, I cleaned out all the debris on the outside because that could also be sucking things in. And now, it doesn't look 100%. You need a degreaser, and so we're going to degrease it in a second. But at least let me show you what it looks like. Here's those corners again. There is some stuff still down there, but it's it's really not as bad. The degreaser is going to knock out a lot of this stuff. Like, there's stuff on here that I obviously need the degreaser for. Inside, so there's still some muck. But I need the degreaser in here to really do its job, because there's stuff everywhere in here. So let's go ahead and spray this down. I'm using LA's Fantastic. I do have to tell you, they have to dilute the solution. So I think for this solution, we're doing a, uh, a one to 10. So one LA's and the rest of water. So let's, uh, we're gonna pump this up and then um, get spraying. And you really wanna get yourself a really good sprayer and then let it sit 
for about five to 10 minutes. You wanna get in all those creases and you'll see like this stuff should all disappear in a little bit. There's just so much. I mean, I feel like this thing hasn't been serviced in a few years to get all this gunk in here. But this is only one side of the coil and then we'll do the other sides and then the inside. I guess for comparison, this will be the before corner. See, a lot of dirt will let sit once again, 10 minutes and needs to eat up that grime. We're doing the outside. I mean, obviously up here really doesn't mean much. It's really the inside, but we'll, we'll knock it all out. Now that it's sat for a while, it's time to clean it off. And I kind of did a little streak to see if the degrees are worked. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be uh, very nice once we hit it with the hose. All right. We're probably gonna scrub this a little bit just to get it off, but um, here goes nothing. So here we are. It is quote unquote clean because there's only so much you could do with this, but you could tell I mean, all the muck is gone. I'll let it dry for a little bit. You see the fans are all clean inside. A million times better. Obviously, there's still some stuff. You can't get it all out. Same thing with here. Can't get all this out, but I got most of it. And this thing was covered all the way to the top. So now I'm going to put this put this back on and put the screws in and then turn it on. I just want to add in that every video I see online, it's always one guy doing this. You need two people because that fan, it needs to be held in a certain way because not you could break something. And so you need one person to hold the fan as you're vacuuming, shot vacuum, because I was in there doing that, and then cleaning on the inside and spraying it. So definitely two people. I mean, you probably could get away with one. I mean, I'm doing it with one, but try to get two. The cover is back on. I'm gonna screw them back in, but I have to say, I want a power washing, just the base of it, just to get it cleaned a little bit since I'm never really back here. And now it's completely now. I mean, I got rid of all this junk back here. It's a couple of them still left, but you wanna make sure all this is clean before you put this all back together because you, you don't wanna do this again. Which you should do with spring maintenance every year. You honestly should. And I think that for the fall, this is gonna get a cover or something. This bad boy or this good man is, uh, is put back together. Before I turn it on, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit, then run the fan. Remember the power is completely disconnected right now. So um, mostly do that because I don't wanna get electrocuted to touching these things. Let it dry for a little bit and sun should be coming out. So maybe for an hour-ish, then fan, and then put the air on. Back downstairs to make sure there's no water. It's dry here, it's dry around. Even where that condensation was earlier, it's gone. And the rags, nothing. So there's no more ice left in this thing. So that boy dried off completely. A little bit of mud left over. But uh, looks better than ever. It actually sounds a lot better, do you hear it? because it's now clean, it doesn't need as much power. You see, when there's a lot of dirt circulating, it's gonna work extra hard to pull in air. And so when you finally clean it out, actually it's more efficient. Everything looks good so far. This is gonna start getting cold. You actually can see the condensation. I don't know if you can see that on there already. It's already starting to cool. Now, weirdly enough, I don't know why this is a thing with the nest, but you just can't have the fan on. You have to have the air conditioning on and then the fan. So I have the fan with the air conditioner both on the same time. And of course, I wanna clean this up before I put everything away. And like that, we are good to go. But I wanna thank you guys for joining me. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. It's so nice to finally have air again. Anyway, see you later, bye.